What is going on everybody? My name is Brandon Zeliff and today I want to talk to you about the ABC Islands and which one you should go to for your kite trip. So the ABC Islands, they consist of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. So before we get into this, I want to give a full disclosure and say that I have been living in the ABC Islands, more specifically on Curaçao, for the better part of two years now. Uh, so while I've only visited Bonaire and Aruba, I wanted, to, I wanted to share my personal experience and tips on the three islands with you and hope these tips uh, really help you decide which island you want to visit. We're going to be looking at a few key aspects to compare between the islands. We're going to look at infrastructure and accessibility, so like roads and whatnot, uh, the quality of the kite surf spots and the access. Um, I'm also going to add a subcategory uh, for how friendly it is for beginners. Uh, and I'm also going to do a category on entertainment as well. We're going to kick it right off with Aruba. and. Aruba, it calls itself One Happy Island, and it's absolutely the place to go to if you want to be on an island that's not too far off of feeling like you're in Miami. Uh, so the infrastructure of the island is it's, it's generally like it's well thought out. Um, it's got an efficient road system, uh, which makes exploring the island relatively painless. Uh, the touristy area of the island is littered with lights, high-rise hotels, casinos, basically, you know, kind of what you'd expect from a very um, American-centric island. So the fact that Aruba has invested heavily in decent roads, bike lanes, and just overall beautification, uh, Aruba gets a, they get an A in the infrastructure and accessibility category. Now for kite surfing, so Aruba has, they have several spots for kite surfing. The most popular spots include Boca Grande, uh, Fisherman's Hut, and there's a lesser known and accessible spot called Baby Beach. So for Boca Grande, the launch area uh, is it's a, it's a beach. It's sandy. Uh, there's enough room to launch and whatnot, and it's it's a dedicated kite beach, which makes kiting there you know pretty pretty easy. You don't have to worry about sunbathers or anything getting in your way or uh, anything like that. And because Boca Grande isn't a sheltered cove, it's a wavy spot, and the wind is it's almost directly onshore from the launch spot. So if you go to the northern part of the kite area. It, the waves kind of have that Washington machine effect, but if you go uh, towards the south end of where the launch is, you can find some clean break and some excellent flat water between those breaks. So as far as Baby Beach goes, it's about a yeah, like a five minute give or take drive from Boca Grande. It's on the southern part of the island and it's a sheltered cove and it has butter flat water. It's a, I should say, it's a very small spot that's only accessible to kiters until 8 a.m. So, a sunrise session is a must. You have to get there at sunrise. And the reason you want to get there before anybody else, uh, as far as kiters are concerned, is it's a very, very small spot. It's in a very small cove and there's only, it's limited real estate. So if there's five kiters on the water, like, I don't know what to tell you. So moving on to Fisherman's Hut, the spot is direct offshore wind but there are high-rise hotels all along that beach, so your offshore wind is gusty. With wind shadows like that, kites can fall out of the sky without warning because of the lulls, and I just, I didn't bother going there, to be honest. I'll, I'll be, I'll tell you right now, I can't really give an accurate assessment of the beach, but I heard all I needed to hear to know that I didn't really want to kite that spot. For Aruba, with the clear blue water, sandy beaches, and having the option between waves and flats, Aruba gets a solid B plus for kite surf spots and access. For beginners, I would give Aruba a B. But for entertainment, I made this category for kiters who are traveling with non-kiters in mind. That being said, Aruba receives a solid A in this category. Aruba has just about everything for everyone with beautiful beaches, bars, entertainment, given that you're in the tourist part of the island. Moving right on to Bonaire. Bonaire is the island to go to if you want to slow everything down in life. This is what I've found. So it's very, very laid back. Uh, it's the smallest population of the islands and it absolutely feels like it. It feels like a small town. So if you're into that kind of thing, you don't really want the nightlife party type trip, you know, hit up Bonaire. Um, there's rarely any traffic to get stuck in. Uh, the atmosphere is just, just chill. The roads are simple, yet they're effective. And while they're not the nicest paved roads you'll ever drive on, you'll find getting around is relatively easy. Uh, the downtown area is very modern. Uh, there's cruise ships that go in and out of there, so they've really they've put a lot of effort into building that up and uh, making it. It's it's touristy. We're just gonna it's touristy. With the ease of travel around the island, and uh, it's 
you know, you're not really going to get lost or anything. Bonaire receives a solid B for infrastructure and accessibility. So for kiting in Bonaire, there is there is one kite spot and it's Atlantis Beach. Uh, it is on the west side of the island and it's a small beach with completely unobstructed offshore wind. The water is that warm, flat, crystal clear blue water that every kiter dreams of. Uh, it has ample space for riding. Now there are two schools that operate off that kite beach and they have small boats that take their students away from the beach. So you don't really have to worry about a crowded kite spot is a non-issue there. Uh, so the boats also serve an additional purpose and they are pretty much your taxi for stranded downwind riders uh, to get back to shore. It does cost $20 if you need a rescue. Uh, keep in mind that the schools usually close up around, I think it's like 5 p.m. typically. So if you want to catch a sunset session, you likely won't have boat support. So ride at your own risk. So Bonaire receives a B in the kiting category as well due to being at the mercy of boat support should you get into trouble and the fact that you're limited to one kite beach even though the spot is amazing i like to have a variety so i'm giving i'm giving them a b so for the beginner uh subcategory for kiting bonaire gets an a and the reason for that yes it's offshore wind but it is unobstructed clean wind it's butterflat water and it's, it's just, it's a beginner's dream. Yes, if you need rescue, you have to pay $20, but if you're taking a lesson there, like it's, you, you can't, you can't beat the conditions. Now kind of reverting back to the whole infrastructure thing with the entertainment. Now Bon Air, uh, because it's, it's that small town, it doesn't really have much in the, uh, the bustling nightlife category in comparison. Now while you certainly could find something to get into if you looked in the right places, it really is just that laid back island and is absolutely the place to go to if relaxing is your thing. Now I should mention that the island is the place to go to if diving is your thing. So for the entertainment category, Bonaire gets a C+. And last but not least, that brings us to the C in ABC Islands, Curacao. Curacao is the largest island and with that, it also has the most people. I'm not going to hold back on infrastructure and accessibility because this is my number one grievance about Curacao. The roads suck. I'm constantly complaining about the roads here because I am constantly sitting in traffic. There are a ridiculous amount of traffic accidents per year for this small island and it's just, it's not acceptable. So, you know, I'm gonna give Curacao a D for infrastructure and accessibility, mostly because of the roads and lack of initiative. So moving on to kiting in Curacao, the island has two spots on the island that are accessible by car. So St. George Bay is the main spot, uh, which is located in a bay on the northeastern-ish part of the island. The launch area is a dirt area and it has, there's astroturf and carpet laid out and that protects your kite. It's a very rocky, uh, rocky spot and booties are definitely highly recommended if you plan on spending any time not on your board. So the water isn't considered like the most scenic and it's mostly chop, but the bay is it's relatively large and you can find plenty of space to kite if you ride up wind. Now there's another spot, there's another spot towards the western part of the island. Uh, this is actually on the south side, it's called uh, Willywood. Uh, it's more or less the same concept, uh, perhaps less rocky and it's located in a bay. Uh, as well. So you're gonna get those similar conditions that what you would find at St. George's. Now there's a spot that is accessible by boat and it is called East Point. So if you find, uh, if you find yourself kind of, you know, getting to know the locals and perhaps uh, interact with somebody that might have a boat, you can, you can find your way out there and it's, it's, uh, it's actually easier to get to the uninhabited island that is just off the East Point of Curacao and it's called Klein Curacao. Klein is Dutch for small, so it's small Curacao. Uh, this island is completely uninhabited, uh, so it's it's really, it's kind of a special spot to kite. You can contact any of the boats that host day trips out there, and for roughly like an average of $100, you can get on a catamaran or any of the other charter boats that go out there, and it's usually all-inclusive uh, food and drinks, so you don't really have to worry about packing much other than your kite stuff. Now keep in mind, if you go out to Klein Curacao, this is not a beginner spot, and the reason for that is you don't want to piss off the captain of the boat you chartered by needing a rescue constantly. If you're an experienced kiter and you find yourself in trouble, they're probably going to be more understanding than if you're constantly needing a rescue. Curacao gets a C plus due to the less than scenic water and the obstacles at the main kite spots. If Klein Curacao and East Point were more easily accessible, 
Chris and I would easily get an A. They would get an A in this, this category. Now for the beginner category for Curacao, uh, I'm gonna give them a B. And the reason for that is despite the obstacles with the rocks and whatnot at the kite spot, the instructors and locals, everyone does a great job of making sure that beginners stay safe. I've seen several people uh, start kiting here and they, they haven't had any issues with accidents or getting hurt, anything like that. So uh, overall, it's a fairly uh, beginner friendly spot with decent wind and uh, flat water. So in the entertainment category, Curacao not only has a very unique downtown area, and there's other hotspots just outside of it that have plenty to do to entertain you, but I would be doing the island a complete disservice if I didn't talk about how some of the most beautiful beaches in the world are lined along the south side of the island. I would be surprised if you found yourself disappointed with going to any one of the beaches along the south side. So Curacao receives a resounding A in this category given the fact that there's there's something for everyone, whether it be recreation, relaxing on the beach, or exploring sea life. Like you can't, you can't beat it. All right, that's it for the tips and tricks on the ABC islands and kiting and such. I really hope this helps you decide on which island to check out for your trip. And as always, if you have questions, please drop a comment below. I am absolutely happy to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button, which helps me create more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.